Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Veltima Fungicide and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to Real Agriculture. Today, I'm at the Ontario Agricultural Conference, catching up with Dr. Dave Hooker from University of Guelph. Dave, how's it going? Yeah, great, thanks. Hey, um, you uh, have been presenting here uh, with a, a bunch of other folks, and uh, one of the focuses of your presentation today was, you know, where does yield come from? You know, uh, you've got that graph there. We're going up two, you know, bushels a year, a one percent. You know, where's yield coming from? Well, that that extra yield, that that one percent per bushel per year or two bushel per acre per year in corn terms, that is coming from a combination of different factors. And if we can divide that out into, we can divide that in, into agronomic factors and breeding, breeding effort. But they're not independent. They're kind of related, they're interrelated some, somewhat. And about 60% of that two bushel per acre per year it, we can say that, yeah, the breeders are responsible for that 60% portion, but the other 40% could be agronomic factors. Mm -hmm. For instance, controlling weeds better, diseases better, better machinery, better fertilizers, and how to use, mm -hmm. let's say, better, better those fertilizers. And the great thing is, is that there's a tremendous interaction between the agronomic and the breeding. And so it really takes... Um, uh, yield potential or potential yield, high potential yielding hybrid to make use of these added agronomic mm -hmm. factors. And so they're not independent, independent, there's not independent agronomy, independent breeding, and they work off of each other, and we mm -hmm. call that an interaction when something is dependent on something else. Yeah. Now, your presentation today. Corn Physiology 101, and you talked about, you know, how we can manage, better manage corn if we understand physiology of the, mm -hmm. of the crop. Now, I want to dig into your presentation here a little bit. Um, for an example, um, now we're going to put up a slide here that shows some tip back. Now, you always get a lot of questions every summer yeah. from growers and people on Twitter saying, hey, Dave, what's happening here? What can I do about it? You know, did I do anything wrong? So take a look at this. Tell us what happens when you see tip back like this. Well, tip back is just a, an, just an excellent, excellent visual mm -hmm. that we see out in the field. Every year we can look to see how our crop is doing. And one of the ways that we can assess how the crop is doing after pollination, uh, after fertilization, when the kernels begin to be develop is this tip back that we sometimes mm -hmm. see. And I see a lot of growers, they get very upset that they have tip back on their ears out in the field. And quite a few negative uh, say, I've lost so much yield, the yield isn't gonna, wasn't as high as it, as it should be because we have tip back. Mm -hmm. And that's not, not necessarily a bad thing to have tip back. And I think that's worth, I guess, exploring, mm -hmm. like why tip back is so what, as what's bad happening? As I mean, you say it's not bad. Is is it a case where the plant looked at the, around it and its mm -hmm. environment and makes the decision to sort of fill the only grain it can, or is it that, how it works? Yeah, that, that's right. So we're, we talked to, in my presentation. I talked about very simply three stages of crop growth and development that is very important for yield. There's stage one, leaf area, stage two, number of seeds per unit area, number three is seed fill. But that the most important component is the number of seeds per unit area. So the plant, it will sense, it will set that size. In corn, it's not very plastic. So it's not like wheat or soybeans that can't compensate very much. So corn ears can only get so big. Mm -hmm. But the plant it will set, it will estimate based on the growing conditions how big that ear should be. And of course there's limits, yeah. there are hard limits on the genetics and whatnot. So if the corn is growing very well, if the crop growth rates are very high um, between V6 and V10, the corn will say, hey, I've got lots of potential here, I'm going to make that ear as big as possible because that's when that potential is set. Right. So it's very important to have that big potential sink of an ear and to set earlier on. And we can make all kinds of analogies, for instance, money, investing, to make sure that you have lots of potential there. And that's what the corn plant is trying to do. And we have tip back, 
we have that big potential was there, but then some stresses came, some bad weather, and that's when the corn says, hey, I, I can't produce as much as I once thought. You know, and that's where you get the tip back. Yeah. Now, there's also some management opportunities here. So we look at your picture here. You've got a full tip, and it, mm -hmm. it looks an amazing corn tip there. But from a, from a management perspective, there may be some missed opportunity. Yeah, there, there is an opportunity there. But most growers say, hey, I've got or my corn ears are filled to the tip. Yields are fine. No management concerns whatsoever. But on the same token, we have essentially maximized the corn plant, set that ear, set the sink, and we have maximized that ear length. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we've done over the past, uh, past is increase the plant populations because the corn can set a big sink. Each plant can set a fairly big sink. And what we've done over the years is increase our plant populations in order to get mm -hmm. a high number of seeds per square meter. And so if the plant is happy, it will generate that big sink, and if it continues on being happy, it will fill right to the end of that potential, and we've essentially capped our yield at that time. And we've limited our potential. If we have ears that are filled to the tip, the more important question, I think, is in terms of management, how could you have managed that crop a little bit different? Well, according to that year, at least anyway, probably increasing the plant population right. a little bit more in order to set that, that potential for the seed number per square meter or per square acre mm -hmm. or per square hectare. It wasn't as big as, um, as it sh could have been with a higher plant population, and that's what should have happened in this scenario where the, if the ears are filled right to the end, we should have increased or had a higher plant population. Right. So, hey, some lots to learn by understanding corn physiology. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would encourage everybody to check out Dave's full presentation at the Ontario Agricultural Conference. Um, I'm sure you can click on there and watch it. And as well, uh, you've got some case studies that you didn't get a chance to dig into that we're going to dig into on Corn School um, throughout the winter. Dave. Yeah. Thank you for stopping by. Oh, you're welcome. My pleasure. Well,